Good morning from San Francisco with OSA's Imaging and Applied Optics Congress. I'm here with Director of Photography, John Schwartzman. John, thank you for joining us oh, today. You're very welcome. Optical imaging obviously has a lot to do with what you do every day. Could you tell us a little bit about your plenary session today? I am going to just speak to an audience of uh, scholars about what it is to be a cinematographer. Uh, I have no idea what most of these people do other than the fact that probably everything that they do has made my ability to make motion pictures better. Absolutely. And what kind of things do you need from the industry in, in order to able, enable next generation movies? Well, we're always looking to just, you know, to keep an audience interested and obviously as technology advances, we're hoping that the technology and the ability to create images for motion pictures uh, also increases. So there have been some new developments which I'm going to speak about at the conference which I find very exciting and you know it's really just a case of trying to take all of the things that we find in our daily lives. Uh, certainly everybody now takes photographs with I would I'm going to say their iPhone. It's the most used camera in the history of mankind. Uh, everybody's got Instagram so they now think that they're a cinematographer and they can color correct and I'm just trying to utilize Again, some of those tools and their simplicity, and I know that a lot of the people at these conferences are helping design the software and the hardware that allows me to do that. And you've worked on such wonderful films like Jurassic World and Seabiscuit. Can you tell us a little bit about the optics behind those movies? Um, well, I mean, they're all different. So the thing is that a cinematographer's job is to figure out the best way to tell the story visually. but every movie you generally have a different technique. You have to read the script and then you decide that okay on a movie like Jurassic World we're going to apply this technique to it because I think it's going to create the most amount of energy or excitement. Seabiscuit's something different and there's not the, the toolbox is, is quite big and we have, a, we have a lot of things that we can choose Back in the, I mean, ironically, both Jurassic World and Seabiscuit were shot on motion picture film. I know something that seems like a lot of people don't even know what it is. I grew up with the yellow Kodak box, but most people are now used to snapping digital images. We still utilize motion pictures film to make a lot of movies, and, and there's just something about it that's, you know, quite elegant. With beyond that, it becomes lenses and choice of lenses and, and lens technology and all of those things go into telling a story, but there is no one size fits all. Thank you so much, John, for joining us today. You're welcome. And signing off from San Francisco with OSA Imaging and Applied Optics.